Welcome to Wholeness in Motion Foundation video series number two on the territory of sensation as information. So we'll start and I'll ask you to describe what it feels like when you're anxious. And just take a moment, just it's kind of like you'd be shouting it out. And, and then now describe what it feels like when you're happy. And again, as if we're in a room together, kind of shout it out or say it. Now, note if answering one of those questions was easier than, uh, than the other. Did the words come more easily to describe anxiousness um, compared to happy or, or not? can go any direction. In When I've asked this, and I've done this for about 25 years to a group, often those answers for um, anxiety, if it, what it feels like to be anxious, are come quick and they're quite descriptive. They'll be, and they'll be located, you know, on my, in their own, in our bodies, you know, my, my chest feels tight, my jaw is gripped, I feel clenched, there's something going on in my gut. Sensory words in the tissues of our body. When I ask the question, what's it feel like to be happen, happy? There's often a bunch of silence, like, wait, what? Okay. And then the first tier of answers are other emotion words. Joyful, merry, kind of gay, happy, <laughs> again. And those are not sensation words. And that takes people a little while. Wait, it feels like a sensation. Those are emotion words, which are shorthand, collection, socially and culturally agreed upon words for a collection of sensations we feel inside and facial expressions and so forth. So emotion isn't the sensation, the sensation is in, is in you. And so sometimes to get someone to actually be able to describe the sensation of being happy, we, we often have to compare it. So, well, you said you were clenched when you were anxious. What does that, how do you feel that in, in, in happy? And then suddenly the words will flow. Oh yeah, I feel light, I feel easy, feel open. I feel kind of like I can be, you know, have, I have more energy versus sort of a gripped energy. And, and a, a whole doorway opens to the fact that we are feeling sensations all the time. We're often just not registering them. And we can make sense of that when we think about that the two primary sensory words that are used in, in the Eurocentric American culture, the dominant culture, are are tense and relaxed. This culture, the, the one I'm speaking of, of, that's my lineage in history, has tended to dismiss sensation as invalid and um, subjective and not, impo not important, and hence our vocabulary is incredibly limited. And when we don't have words for something in many cases, we, we stop registering, we start to stop even noticing, we have less facility with the whole territory of what we actually feel, our felt sense of life. And if we stop and say, well, why do we even have sensations? What are they for? We might discover their purpose and what use they are for us. So in a very huge oversimplification, at any given moment you have, there are sensations, whether you know it or not. And sometimes the sensation is something going on in your digestive tract or the, the internal sensations that we get from our system, the homeostasis system, the one that's doing our internal processes and our viscera, and, and those senses are going on. 
We also have a whole series of senses, pr primarily up in the head, but in our skin and so forth, that tell us about the world around us, what we see, what we smell, the temperature and so forth. So we're getting information of the moment. And then we have our, our past, our life story which is really a story of learning and adapting and, and experience. every experience kind of helps us create network, neural networks, if we think of it, and of the neurological system, but also in our cells and so forth. Our, our life experience is within us, in our DNA, shifts and changes in our nervous system. And so when sensory information comes in and gets mixed up with the, the, our current state of being, whether we've had a lot, enough sleep, what's happening in our hormonal system and so forth, it gets mixed up with our state of being and our history, that combines to have us interpret or make meaning of what's going on in the moment. And that meaning is sorted around predicting what's going to happen next. So in a sense, the whole activity of sensation is, is about predicting, about um, finding delicious food or, or saving us from threat. It's a lively system of prediction to help us thrive in the world and interpret. So we're like, what we feel is like a meaning-making system, an interpreting system in relationship to a prediction system. So all that combined, present, internal present, external present, past, future, gives us our current state of being. We feel our state of being. We don't feel like the fact of ourselves. We feel our interpretation of life in the moment. And that is incredibly useful information. It's it's not a truth, it's, it's true for us in this moment. It's changeable. Each, the, our, our future gives us a new, a new past. The next moment gives us a new past so we can make changes to what goes on, what causes us fear and grip. Now, five years ago, we could change and update so it, it doesn't, if it doesn't need to. So, if we put our sensation in this context, it, it's really like acting like an internal compass to help us navigate into the next moment. Our sensory field is our, is our inner compass, and that is a shorthand lingo word in wholeness in motion work. You will, you will hear it often to say, if we work together and do something, it'd be like, okay, well, how do you register that in your compass? How does that make sense to you? And, and so the heartbeat of wholeness in motion, which is setting up and offering you experiences and ideas and ways around wholeness in the world around you so that you have the power to make choice, to interpret and use and discard as you you need to, based on your own truth, your own experience, this sensory information is, is the foundation. It's like the language of your system, your relationship to the world. So in wholeness and motion, the premise that sensory information is Import, is real information, is valid and important information, um, really lays at the foundation of so much of what we do and how our approach is laid out. And the premise not only that it's sensory information is important, it, it is the foundation for a person to be actually literally, literally in touch with themselves, literally to have access to their ideas and their truths so that they have a starting point from which to make changes, to learn, to grow, to, to, to live. And with the pedagogical eye then, we look at as an educator or a leader 
Am I giving feedback? Am I setting up situations that supports another person to to have access to their compass and give voice to their own compass, to to offer their ideas and opinions and even know what they are? Or am I setting up conditions where I am spending my time trying to impose my voice, my ideas, that I've confused that my sensations and my beliefs are truths rather than interpretations of the moment. So it's almost as if this very act of being more in touch with what I believe and understand right now actually lets that be a delicate, a light connection so that I'm, I'm open to the possibility of shifting and changing and learning and, and growing. It, it almost feels like it's contradictory, but the more I get in touch with the, my sensations and my truth and in the context of this being my interpretation of the moment, the more I'm able to hear other interpretations and, and collectively grow and thrive versus defend some belief that I've confused with some kind of ultimate truth. So as an educator, as a leader, as we can discern uh, that our questions aren't telling someone what they believe in, in this whole territory, we are actually starting where we are and helping a, per a student start from where they, where they are so that we then have some place to go. We start from where we are so that we can move to where, what comes next with our innate intelligence, with our, our whole self at the table. So welcome to Wholeness in Motion, this core premise that sensation is here in you at all times it's hugely important information and we can continually and ever more refinedly and facility develop that knowledge. Thank you.